Canelo versus Charlo's undercard is absolutely stacked top to bottom. Absolutely great fights. And some people, for some reason, think that it's not. And for that, they're dumb. Of course, we got the opener being Elijah Garcia versus Jose Resendiz, also known as Armando Resendiz. Great fight. Next fight, obviously, is the Jordanis Ugas versus Mario Barrios fight for the WBC interim title, which is a very interesting one, as people have a lot to say about this fight. And, of course, we got the main event, another amazing fight of super welterweights. You got Jesus Ramos Jr. fighting the always dangerous Erickson Lubin. And, of course... What was the thing people were talking about, the Mario Barrios and Ugas fight? It was that this was supposed to be the co-main event and not Ramos versus Lubin, which is very interesting, which, don't get me wrong, it does make a lot of sense. Ugas versus Barrios is absolutely a perfect co-main event to a pay-per-view. Difference is, Ramos versus Lubin can be its own main event. Like, it could stand on its own without being too much of a hassle. Being like, mm, no, I'm not too sure about this being main event. They would 100% be like, oh, this is perfect main event. So that's why I think that's why I took co-main event instead of Ugas versus Barrios, where it's, if they were their own main event, probably would not do too well in terms of numbers. Actually, it would not do too well in numbers. That's a guarantee, right? Before that, the undercard is getting its own video this time. We're doing it a little differently. And, of course, the first fight, that being Elijah Garcia being a undefeated middleweight, also really young. He is 20. He is 20, and he threw him in there with the undefeated Vidal Jr. and the very strong, very tough Salgado. Why? I have no idea. Leave the man alone. And then they're throwing him in there with Armando Resendiz. If you don't know him, in his last fight, he TKO'd Jared Hurd via lip cut. I think it was horrible. I'm not showing anything about that, but I think it was tragic. Weird thing is, his last two fights, that being against Salgado and Resendiz, are both former 154 pounders. One moved up because he lost, I would assume, as Salgado lost to Spencer. And Resendiz, I don't know, he just moved up because they said, hey, you want to fight her? Like, okay. And then I guess he's staying here. Very nice. Of course, Garcia is 15 and 0 with 12 knockouts. And Resendiz is 14 and 1 with 10 knockouts. Very clear in terms of knockout powers, but Resendiz does have power right and these are two young fighters with similar fights in their records both have fought 15 times although Resendiz have lo has lost but that was not too long ago 2021 the end or damn near the end of 2021 via unanimous, unanimous decision to Marcos Hernandez so of course what I think is going to win I mean it's going to be tough because both are young fighters who have power in their hands it's going to be a tough one but I'm going to have to go with Garcia I think Garcia fight the better opposition than Resendiz Resendiz did beat Jarrett Hurd, which, don't get me wrong, is a good fighter, but he hasn't fought in what, in what they said, like, damn near two years. That takes a toll on your body. Not to mention, he was getting hit quite a lot in the fight against Hurd. I mean, it wasn't really affecting him or hurting him, but he's fighting someone with power and has dealt with someone like Resendiz before, that being Salgado. You know, the literal beginning, the bell rang, Salgado was just going after him, and then, I, don't, I, guess, I guess he gassed out or figured out Garcia's not going anywhere. And he got unanimous decision over him. To be honest, I think I think Garcia stops Resendiz. I, I don't think... Resendiz is young. He's a good fighter. But I think his style would probably not do him too well against someone like Garcia. Garcia would probably TKO him. Especially because he gets such a big stage yet again in the Charlo or Canelo Charlo undercard. And that's definitely a good spot to have. So I got Garcia beating Resendiz like... The seventh round, I think, I think he starts putting it on him. But then again, who knows? Resendiz is a hundred percent game. This could a hundred percent go decision as well. But I just think Garcia will rise to the pay-per-view occasion and stop Resendiz with the statement victory. Especially in a dead division like middleweight, I could easily see Garcia getting a title. Maybe not next year. Maybe not even the year. Probably a year after that. Probably two years from now. I don't know. Because there's not really not a lot of people in middleweight. And, of course, we got the co-main event, that being, of course, Jordanis Ugas versus Mario Barrios. Mario Barrios, although, has got his first fight. He is 1-1 one one in Walter White, which is, which is not that good, although his... And, of course, Barrios' his second loss is, of course, the one of the best Walter Waits. I don't know anymore, but used to be one of the best Walter Waits. Keith Thurman. 
And, of course, his first loss is against Gervonta Davis, which not bad losses, you know. And he's still young. But, of course, Ugas is 27-5 and five with 12 knockouts. And he has finally been stopped in his last fight against Errol Spence Jr. So, you know, that is that an indication of anything? Probably not, because it's Errol Spence. You know, it's not. I'm not. I'm not saying Mario, Mario Barrios is gonna knock Ugas out, because if that happens, that's crazy. That's not gonna happen. But of course, Ugas has a 44.44% knockout ratio, which is not that good. But of course, he is fighting Mario Barrios, 27 and two with 18 knockouts, was stopped once against Tank. But then again, looking back at it, Keith Thurman probably would have. Stopped Mario Barrios too if you wanted to, but I guess he just decided to go decision. Of course, he's coming off of a TKO win against Giovanni Santiago. All right, victory. So who do I think is going to win? And it's tough to say. Ugas is getting old. He's, he was battered in the Spence fight, which I'm not going to say nothing about that because, you know, he fought like a warrior, but could be that he could be slowing down. But then again, it's Ugas. Ugas had four losses before getting a title, or I would assume four losses. He kept persevering, and Mario Barrios is obviously young and looking to make a statement. And if he beats Ugas, he will make a statement. He will be showing the world that he deserves to be at welterweight. Or at least deserves to be in the elite level still. I don't even know if he even was in the elite level, but you know we'll talk about that later. So who do I think is going to win? Ooh, it's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a tough fight for both of them. Ugas does not have the power to stop Barrios. Barrios does not have the experience to stop Ugas or even the power because Barrios' power is weird. Like, like yeah, he, he knocks a lot of people out. He has a 66 or I would assume 70 without the losses, right? Percent knockout ratio. The difference is he needs a whole, like, three rounds to start putting the beats on you. It's not like, oh, I could do it in a round. No, he needs rounds to ramp it up. And I got Ugas split decision. I think, I think it's a very close competitive fight com- Considering Ugas is now 37 years old. But then again, he is a Cuban. And most Cubans know how to not age as much. I don't know, man. Cubans are Cubans are um, defying age constantly. But yeah, I got Ugas split decision. I mean, I would assume the only way to beat Ugas is to out-muscle him. Or out-will him, which Barrios could. But I don't think that's going to happen. I got Ugas split decision win over Mario Barrios. And unfortunately, I think Mario Barrios after this fight will go into gatekeeper territory. Especially if it's competitive. If not, ooh, that's going to be a tough loss for Barrios. I'm not saying consider retirement because he's young, right? But I don't know. Now, of course, the main event, the undefeated Jesus Ramos Jr. will be taking on Erickson Lubin. All right, Jesus Ramos Jr. is 20-0 and 0 with 16 knockouts. Not that hard to figure out the percentage. He is a 80% knockout artist. Obviously coming off of a, a, a big win against the undefeated Joseph Spencer. Also known as Joey Spencer. And now he'll be facing another very, very tough fight in Erickson the Hammer Lubin. He is 25-2 and 2 with 18 knockouts and he has been stopped twice. Which is bad. Kind of, except when you realize he fought six years ago against Jermel Charlo, which would make Lubin 21 when he fought Charlo. That is, what'd you expect? He threw in a dude who has college debt in a fight with Charlo. What'd you expect was going to happen? And of course, his latest loss is against Sebastian Fondora, which, don't get me wrong, is a pretty bad beating, but he came back with a TKO win over Luis Arias. The difference is Lubin was actually catching Fundora. It's just the damage was the damage was already done. Which is gonna be very interesting against Ramos Jr. because I don't know about you, but Lubin looks like he just keeps trying to go for the win like round one, which is gonna be a bad news if he tries to fight Ramos like that. If he's gonna try to fight Ramos like Spencer tried to fight Ramos, it's not gonna end well for him. He's gonna get stopped again by Ramos. Right? But if Lubin Fights on the outside, collects data like I don't know every other boxer should. Lubin has a good chance of winning. He has the power. He has the experience to do it, right? He has wins over the former unified champion Rosa- Jason Rosario. And Tero Gashow. Gashow. Very good wins, right? Showed him that he's a, an elite fighter. But if he fights like he usually fights with Ramos, it's going to be a quick night 
for him, right? I, I say he gets stopped in round five if he fights like he does against Ramos. If he fights on the outside and keeps his distance, I think he got this. But it, it, it it's a tough thing to ask for Lubin. Because if not, it's going to be like him fighting Fandora where, oh, he's getting whooped. But, oh, look, he's coming back. Oh, wait, I forgot. He got a beatdown for five rounds. Of course, he's going to get stopped now. I like Lubin. I want him to win. But, no, I think Ramos, I just think he's too strong. He's too big, literally, for Lubin. I think Lubin gets stopped in the, what did I say, sixth round? Yeah, it, it's going to be surprising seeing him lose that quickly. But Lubin is most likely going to lose by stoppage, unfortunately. But, of course, those are my locked picks. I actually am going to change one. I actually got Garcia TKO round 8. Not round 7, like I said before. I say round 8. I think Resendiz is really tough. I think he could definitely make it to the end of the fight, but I don't think so. I think Garcia decides, nah, nah, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm show everyone what I made of, right? Of course, I got Ugas split decision. It's going to be a tough fight for Ugas, especially coming off of that pretty bad beating by Spence. But I think Ugas still has what it takes to show Mario Barrios who's on top, right? And, of course, I got Ramos Jr. winning sixth round TKO over Erickson Lubin, which is going to be sad because I like Lubin, but oh well. You know what? You win some, you lose some. But, hey, who knows? Maybe Lubin it surprises everyone and comes out and knocks him out. Is that going to happen? No. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lubin. Everyone pray for Lubin. Make sure he gets to the final round at least. But, hey, what a coincidence. We have a fight for each weight class. That's right. We got a welterweight belt between Ugas and Barrios. A super welterweight belt between Ramos and Lubin. We got a middleweight bout between Garcia and Resendiz. And, of course, the main event, we got the super middleweight fight between Canelo and Charlo. Which, that will be its own video. So, watch out for that. Why? Because I don't... Because this is a very long... This is a relatively long video. So, we're going to talk about that later. And I hope to catch you on that one. Changing mags! Planting Claymore! 